At some point, you just have to get your skin tones right. Today, I will show you a tool that helps you achieve perfect skin tones every single time. First, let's have a look at a pretty standard color grading workflow. Usually, you take care of your skin tones during primary balancing and later as a secondary correction. One of your primary corrections is balancing, where you get your image roughly in the right direction. If you were a caveman, you would just grab a draw mask and isolate your skin tones so you can see what's going on in the vector scope. If you don't want to waste time on drawing masks, you can grab my free check layer plugin and I will make the timeline visible right here and just place it on top of everything. Then I will push the timeline out to my second monitor again so we have a little bit more real estate. Then you would go into the check layer settings like this and enable the eyedropper mask. Then you can drag it around and change its size. And as you can see, the vector scope reads out exactly what's within the eyedropper mask. The link is in the video description below. Going back to the clip, I would apply an instance of color wheels and take care of my white balance. To do that, I pay attention to the vector scope and then I try to get the skin tones just on the skin tone indicator line. By the way, if you don't see this skin tone indicator line in your vector scope, you can enable it with this drop down menu. On the view, you can hide the skin tone indicator or show the skin tone indicator. And as you can see, this is before, this is after. I just did a minor white balance correction and if I disable the eyedropper mask, let's have a look. This is before and this is after. Pretty significant difference. Again, before, after. Here we go. We balanced our entire image by taking care of the skin tones, using them as a visual anchor. But this sucks at least in comparison to what I'm about to show you. The next example is already balanced. So here we will just perform a secondary adjustment to get the skin tones just right. But instead of isolating the skin tones, we will apply my Force Colors plugin. Then we will go to the Force Colors and select the Skin Tone Indicator. For this example, I will use the Lenient Skin Tone Indicator. And now everything becomes colorful. What's going on here? We are using the concept of force colors. Basically, Final Cut Pro will display all hues in the skin tone range as yellow, everything towards the greenish hues as green, and everything towards the more magenta hues as magenta. The force colors are visual indicators for these hue ranges. Strict, moderate, and lenient. If I apply another instance of color wheels, drag it underneath, and start playing around with it, you can see that we get instant visual feedback on what is on the skin tone indicator line and what is not. Furthermore, we don't need to reference the vector scope at all. And the beauty of this is I can see precisely what is happening where with my skin tones. As mentioned before, in this example, we will perform a secondary adjustment. So let's get rid of these color wheels and use an instance of hue saturation curves instead. Again, I drag it underneath the force color plugins. If I disable the force color plugin, you can see that we have a little bit more red in here because this jacket is reflecting a rather red hue onto his skin tones. In the context of the overall grade, I would be fine with that. But since this is a close up, I want to get my skin tone as perfect as possible. And therefore, I'm fine with compromising the context here. Let's enable the force colors again. I go into the hue saturation curves and I will grab the eyedropper for the hue versus hue curve. Now I start adjusting the curve until I'm right where I need to be. And I think somewhere around here would be fine. Let's see if we can assimilate these skin tones just a little bit more. Something like this. Beautiful. And now I have to adjust the more reddish hues. Something like that. Okay, let's go back to the overview and disable the Force Colors plugin. You can see I also changed the hue of his jacket, but I will take care of this in just a second. Only pay attention to his skin tones. This is before and this is after before and after. Another side effect of shifting the red hues is that his lips also got a pretty yellow hue to them. So let's go back into the curves and let's try to move this anchor point just a little bit closer so we can get rid of the hue shift in the reds. I might want to enable the false colors again to see how far I can go. So I think I will drag this a little bit more towards here 
and I will move in this point just a little bit more. Something like this. I go back and disable the false colors plugin and let's have a look. Before, after, before, after. His jacket and his hat stays pretty much in place, so I'm pretty happy with that. Before, after, and we get rid of this, for one, this red reflection on his cheek here. And you can see there's a little bit of magenta going on on his cheekbone. So this is before, have a look here. And this is after. Also, his nose is much more natural now. Before, after, actually, let's zoom in just a little bit. So before and after much better. Now we could take care of these runaway hues here on his lips and his chin, but for this demonstration I will leave it at that. That's pretty neat, but a word of caution. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that everything should be yellow, so to speak, on the skin tone indicator line. Always keep in mind that the hue of your skin tones always depends on the context of your scene. If there's a red light in your room, of course your skin will be more on the red side of things, which is perfectly fine. I guess what I want to say is color grading is all about context and decision making. Make sure you have reasons for your decisions. Use your head and don't mindlessly conform your skin tones to a predefined value. That also means consistency is much more important. Let's zoom out and I will bring the timeline up here. You could grab an adjustment layer, place it on top of everything and put your false colors plugin onto there. Just load the right one. Let's make this a little bit bigger and then you could just scrub through your project and see any inconsistencies. By the way, using the same principle, the plugin also helps you to indicate perfectly neutral colors. This will help you to achieve perfect white balance. I go into neutrals and select moderate. As you can see, all colors that are neutral become cyan. To go a bit further, I could select strict. I apply an instance of color wheels and play around with the white balance until everything becomes cyan. and something like this. Let's disable the plugin and have a look at the before and after. This is before and this is after. Lastly, if you're into that, there's also a pretty standard false color exposure mode for Rec. 709. And as you can see, if I adjust the exposure underneath, the plugin reacts accordingly. As mentioned on my website, these tools are inspired by Stefan Ringelschwandner's Mononotes Utility DC12 for DaVinci Resolve. Coincidentally, we worked on a similar idea simultaneously, but he was undoubtedly the first to release it in such a polished way. So all credits go to him. Especially since his idea of showing the deviation in green and magenta is just brilliant. If you're using DaVinci Resolve, definitely check out his DCTLs instead and have a look at his YouTube channel. The link is in the video description.